On today's episode, I am on the hunt for some really elegant French decor. I am absolutely loving all the French inspired things and I feel like it just looks so elegant. And the things that I'm doing in today's video are going to be maybe some of the most elegant flips I've ever done. I think they look extremely high end and expensive and you will not believe the bargain that I got for them in this shopping trip. About to hit up one of my favorite regular Goodwill locations. Right away, I saw this for $4.99, which is giving me Eiffel Tower vibes. I think that it's gorgeous. And this little cutie I thought would be perfect for Christmas, and I didn't want to pass it up, even if it's not really my French vibes. But then I found these little kind of corbel-looking wall-hanging shelves, and these are actually trending right now. This planter was only $2.99, and I thought it had a lot of French look to it. And then this was $3.99, which I thought was eh, a little bit too faux gold, brassy looking. So I put that one back next. I saw this coffee mug, which I thought was so cute and I wanted to keep it for myself Rory don't drink out of it. No, don't drink it <laughs> The next thing that I saw was this really beautiful and elegant vase or candle holder for $2.99 And then I found another one of these sort of corbel looking wall shelves and then I found the perfect French looking lamp that just needed a makeover. These were also really cute, but they were missing the legs on them. So I didn't take a chance on those. I liked this mirror behind here too, but it was for $16.99, way overpriced. So I left that there. These I saw for $6.99 a piece and I thought that they were perfect. Not only are they written in French, but it has that beautiful French elegant look to them. And then I saw these little stocking hangers that were made out of metal for $1.99. The last thing that I'm going to get is this candle holder, which was $3.99 that I thought would go perfect with the color scheme that I had in my head for all of today's flips. And all of the Christmas things, I'm just going to pack them away for another day. Let's start flipping with the biggest pieces that we got. My husband's gonna make some frames on here and I had a request from some of my viewers to show a slowed down version of the instructions on making these wooden frames. So the first thing he does is he cuts a 45 angle on the end of one of his pieces of one by two. Then he lines it up with the side that he's starting with and makes a mark and cuts there another 45. When you're cutting, you want to uh, cut the inside of the 45 on the line that you're marking. So he just goes around tracing and marking that line and cutting a 45 on each of the lines he's making. He's pretty much uh, like building it as he's going, but he doesn't actually nail it in until after it has been sanded and stained. So that is the way that he does it and it works out best to where all of the angles actually match up. Another thing to keep in mind is that a lot of times these frames like these, these um, canvases are not perfectly square. So that is why it's important not to just measure it and then make the cuts based off of measurements. It's much better if you actually set the pieces on there and trace the lines yourself.
Those frames turned out so gorgeous. I can't wait to get started on this lamp now to go with it. And all of this just totally lucked out with being already very French inspired as they were. But it can't be French for me unless it's got some French blue. So I'm going with this blue color to paint all of that magenta that was on the lamp already. And as you can see very clearly that magenta color was very damaged and looked worn and dirty and just not elegant whatsoever. <laughs> It's also not a color that I enjoy. I'm not a big fan of that kind of color. And I think that this clean blue color not only gives it a little bit of a modern touch, but it just makes the piece look elevated and a lot more expensive than what we were starting with. I think that high-end decor uh, does not have to be perfect and it still can have an aged look to it. But when it looks like it's just been through the worst of things and back. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the look we're going for. So I am going to do an aged look with the paint by dabbing my paintbrush on here to create a textured look. And this will make it look as if it were from a beautiful chateau in France hundreds of years ago in a good way and not in a, oh wow, that thing has been through some stuff kind of way like the magenta was looking. I sealed it with some Fusion brand clear wax and I can link that down below for you um, if you don't have a place to buy it locally and then I'm going to let that wax set for a few days before I use this lamp to be staged in my shop but look at this lampshade I got this lampshade like a year ago maybe at an estate sale and it was still in the packaging brand new been guessing it's probably from the 90s I thought that the shape of it went really well with the elegant antique look that I had going on and I really want to know your opinion does this lamp now look elegant or does it just look outdated I'm on the fence a little bit but I do think that it is beautiful regardless but would you do a different more updated lampshade or do you think this one was perfect for this lamp. I would love to hear your opinion on it. And thank goodness the lamp works. Let there be light. The next thing I'm going to work on are these cute little decorative shelves. Obviously they are not a matching pair, but I want them to look as though they go well together. They don't have to be exactly the same, but I think that putting them in the same color scheme and doing the same effects on them will help them go together. You all who have been watching my channel for a long time know that I love to do these DIYs where I create a, a big vignette together. So that is what I'm going to do today like I always do. I'm going to take each of these DIYs and slowly put them together into one cohesive looking vignette. Not only is this good for you at home to envision how you can pick a bunch of random things either you already have or random things you picked up from the thrift shop or things that somebody gave to you for free or you found on the side of the road, whatever it may be, and make them look as though they go together, that you actually went out and bought it as a set or whatever it may be, or you had it custom made for your home. We're going to make that sort of look happen out of things that were extremely cheap. So I'm going to just go over both of these and get a solid coverage over both. I don't want anything underneath to come through for the effect that I'm doing because I'm going to do kind of a reverse. Oh, what would I call that? Hmm, like a like a reverse distressing in a way. So instead of distressing and pulling the paint back, I'm going to add another layer of paint on the spots that I would have distressed. And I'll explain that more in a second.
Now for that reverse distressing, as I called it. You're going to want to go out and buy some of this stuff. It's called Liquid Leaf. I think I got mine from Hobby Lobby. But you're going to apply it with a flat sponge brush like these. These are so cheap. You can buy them anywhere, even the dollar store. And you're going to just apply it using that flat tip of the sponge brush. Now, all these edges are spots that would have gotten distressed by a piece of sandpaper, right? Like if you had sanded, all of these spots that are the high spots would have started being distressed and showing what was underneath. But I'm going over those spots with a different color. So it's kind of like that gold is coming through that maybe the underneath side was originally gold and that I distressed it back and now the gold is showing through. But I did it the really easy way where I didn't have to do any of the actual sanding or painting the whole thing gold in the first place. You're just using that tip of that sponge brush to hit all of the high spots. And it doesn't have to be super scientific. You're literally just rubbing it across all of the top surfaces. And this was so much easier than I thought. And it turned out stunningly gorgeous. And I'm going to seal all of that with that same exact clear wax that I used on the lamp as well. The rest of the items that I picked up, like this mug, I had the Eiffel Tower thing, and I had a couple other metal things that needed to be cleaned. I just put it through the dishwasher, and that is the easiest way I have found to wash dusty things that have a bunch of little small cracks and crevices. So I washed all of these pieces together in the dishwasher. The only thing that I didn't wash in the dishwasher was this because it has that mercury glass look on the inside. And that stuff will come off if you use any kind of cleaners or detergents or even water to scrub. I don't know why they make them that way. It seems very strange that they don't use something that can stay on when you clean it. So as I'm cleaning here, I'm being very careful not to scrub too hard. Although even just wiping it, you can see that some of that mercury glass finish will come off. You just have to really be careful when you're washing it. Either way, this thing is stunningly beautiful and it looks very expensive and you just have to take good care of things like these. I'm going to stage it with some greenery. You can do a topiary ball like this or you can put a candle inside there or you can put some green stems in there like these. And when I staged this with the rest of the pieces, it looked so pretty and it goes with that garden and flower theme in the paintings. Once all of the metal items were clean out of the dishwasher, I finished staging them together with everything. This candle holder could look stunning with some beautiful white or green candles on it. Or you can get creative and put something different on each one, like maybe some little bowls or whatever your mind can come up with. It looked perfect as it was. I didn't want to change it at all. I thought about painting it blue, but then I just really appreciated the finish that it already had on it. It has leaves and birds on there, which are perfect. Go so well with so many different types of decor, whether that is traditional or going with the cottage style or French country. It just goes with everything. And now you can see that Eiffel Tower piece on the left and that beautiful planter on the right. 
all these colors are coming together to create this cohesive, high-end, very expensive, and high-quality look to it. So this is a great example of how I bought a bunch of cheap things from Goodwill that did not go well together as they were, or you may have never thought to put together as they were, but I created this cohesive and high-end classic decorative look that any of you can do at home for absolutely pennies on the dollar. Even the paint that I used was cheap Waverly paint from Walmart, which I think is around like three or four dollars, and I barely used even less than half of it. And the greenery I reuse and reuse over and over again all throughout the year and every year, every spring, I pull them back out and use them after Christmas or they, they go so well with everything. And that greenery is cheap from Walmart. But these paintings are absolutely beautiful. That rich chocolate brown looks so elegant now that it has that wooden frame around it. It just makes the whole piece look much more high quality, high end as if you spent hundreds of dollars on this art, but little do others have to know if you only spent $6.99 on each of the pictures and then $5 on a piece of wood. The lamp and these beautiful corbel shelves look great together. You don't even have to hang these up as shelves on the wall. You can stick them just like this on a table or on a stack of books or on a bookshelf whatever you want to do, just think outside the box when you find stuff. And I want to really encourage you also to look at what you already have in your house. Before you take that item to Goodwill, say to yourself, can I just repaint this and learn to love it even more? If you enjoyed today's money-saving, elegant thrift flips, then please consider hitting subscribe down below. We post videos every Wednesday and Sunday, and we'll see you next time. Bye!